For a deeper analysis of NATO's agenda in Warsaw and Russia's reaction to NATO's concerns, we're joined now by Kurt Volker. He's executive director of the McCain Institute for International Leadership at Arizona State University. I had the good pleasure of talking to you earlier this week about uh, Brexit. You had reassuring words. Cameron, you must have written a script for me. You had <laughs> well, much the same stuff today. I think we're observing the same things. You know, when you, when you look at NATO, there are plenty of countries that are members of NATO that are not members of the EU, Turkey, Norway, the U.S., Iceland, Canada. This is not going to be a big factor. For the European Union, sure, of course, that's a big issue. But for NATO, it's always been a collection of individual member states who collectively make decisions by consensus. That's not going to change. And the UK has always been a big military contributor. That's not going to change. They say this is the largest buildup since the, the Cold War in Europe. Uh, is it needed? Well, it, you analyze that statement, the largest buildup since the Cold War, because since the Cold War, we've been in steady decline. Since 1989, when we had roughly 300,000 U.S. forces in Europe, uh, we've been in steady, steady decline. We have roughly 37, 38,000 right now. Uh, NATO countries have slashed their defense budgets. We used to talk about 3% of GDP as a target. We slashed that to 2 Barely anybody is doing above 1% right now, with only a handful of exceptions. So what we're seeing is NATO responding to a changed security environment. Russia's invaded Georgia, it's invaded Ukraine, it's annexed Crimea, it's occupied some other territories, buzzed U.S. warships in the Baltic Sea, it's violated other countries' airspace, it's threatened nuclear weapon use against Denmark. And so in that environment, people are nervous. And so NATO is doing a little bit more to put some forces in the territories of new members to reassure them and say, we have the will and the capability to defend all allies. Uh, Stoltenberg in, in Guy's piece said that uh, with all the increased military activity in and around Europe, there's an interest in agreeing on the rules of the road with Russia. Sounds great. How easy will it be to achieve? It'll be easier if we have this kind of laying down a marker where we say we are willing to defend allied territory, we do have the capability to do it, we have the will to do it, let's settle things down now. Up until now, Russia has invaded Georgia, no reaction, invaded Ukraine, there's sanctions, but no, no real pushback. It's kind of an encouragement to Russia to see what else can happen. And now I think we're beginning to turn the tide and saying, okay, we, we've got to push back on this to create some stability then we have something to talk about, about how do we move forward from here. And it looks like that talk uh, may start pretty soon, because the NATO-Russia uh, Council meets next week, NATO mm -hmm. releasing a press release suggesting the Council has an important role to play as a forum for dialogue and information exchange to reduce tensions and to increase predictability. That's um, always been the idea. So what will happen there? Well, what I think will happen is Russia will come in and they'll read out a series of complaints about all the things they're unhappy about that NATO is doing. Other allies or allies there at the table will read out their list of complaints about all the things that Russia has done that make allies feel insecure and that explain why NATO has had to reassure some of its eastern members that we still have a collective defense commitment that matters. Once you get through all of that, NATO will then start proposing areas of cooperation. Uh, we'd like to work together on missile defense. Uh, we have rogue states like, you know, in Iran or in North Korea that we could work together dealing with missile defense. We'd like to work together on peacekeeping operations in the world and share doctrine on that. We'd like to get uh, work together on uh, demilitarization and stability in the Arctic. There are a lot of things that people are going to propose. What will be interesting is to see whether Russia is serious about cooperating with NATO or just wants to use this as a forum to complain. What's your sense? Uh, I think they just want to use it as a forum to complain. We've had this NATO-Russia Council in existence since 2002, and a formal relationship between NATO and Russia since 1997. Russia has never really shown serious interest in cooperating. They like using NATO as a, uh, the image of an enemy to sell that domestically and justify the Kremlin's authoritarian hold on power. Kurt Volker, always a pleasure having you on broadcast. Thanks so much for stopping by. My pleasure. Thank you.